Right, good morning everybody. I'm here with Louise and what we're doing this morning is we're making a video to show you, our supporters and our volunteers, everybody, the huge changes that have happened at the shelter. It's actually a year this month since we said goodbye to our last international volunteer and also we saw our last international visitors, all of course because of Covid. And huge changes have happened to the shelter. In fact, Louise mentioned just looking at uh, the size. It's actually now doubled in size from the original shelter, which many of you remember, we originally moved in here back in uh, 2006. And um, today, many of these improvements that have made were actually planned for this year, but many were not. And it's thanks to you, our supporters, that we've been able to not close our doors to any animal in need. We've built a, well, nine or 10, is it, and more under, still underway, new shelters to be able to accommodate the very many large number of dogs, particularly pets that were abandoned because of COVID. And here we are now stood on what is the latest piece of land we've uh, been able to purchase. We thought it was too good an opportunity when it was put up for sale not to get it because it will secure our long-term future. We don't want to be building on it unnecessarily, but it's here and we now have it. And that again is thanks to you. You can probably see if you, we look around, you can see the walls being built. This land has had to be filled to bring it up to the same height of the rest of the shelter because it was a rice paddy formerly. Um, you could people working down there are putting in drainage for the outside so when it does rain heavily the rain runs off and it will go into the lake there's a deep water well already been put in and down that bottom end the plan is to put uh, up to probably about five off lead areas because we've lost two already from uh, the new the new kennels that we've built on the old site and there's no room on there for any more off lead areas so we only have two now and as volunteers will know it's a highlight of the dogs to be able to go into off lead areas so we, we will put uh, probably another five all across the bottom we're also going to be putting an experimental run in here this will be built to a different design it will be four smaller units with a central area for the carer and that will um, it's designed specifically for very shy dogs who are frightened in the runs and often hide so they can come out of themselves and get more confident. So the plans are to start that as well in uh, this year. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk around and uh, show you exactly what has been done and is still continuing to be done. You can hear, probably hear drills and hammers going off. And here we are, uh, now into the um, existing site of the sanctuary. And behind me is one of the runs that was constructed due to COVID. Uh, it's built on the um, old maintenance storage area, but very quickly due to many dogs um, needing to stay in our care. And with international travel and no adopted dogs being able to leave, we quickly need to repurpose very quickly and build this run which is known as D5. It's been, as I say, used as an overflow. It's currently being used as a quarantine area for some of the dogs who have survived um, distemper and um, are needing to be quarantined for a while before they can come back out into the sanctuary. And as you can see behind us, the wall that was originally here, sectioning the old existing sanctuary in the new land has now been demolished and um, creates a lovely walking area and view and really opens it up. We did have the wall of remembrance plaques running along the lake, but don't worry, they will be repositioned on the end wall, which will be painted and made look beautiful in the coming months. Also, you will remember we had the shelters to be able to sit when you walk around the lake with a dog um, sheltering from the sun. These were sponsored and of course 
they will be cleaned up and repositioned around the new land very soon. Okay, well, over the noise of drills and everything, I'll just explain what's happening here. This is obviously work in progress. You may remember there used to be a big water tower here that was never used. And obviously we want to create access across here for volunteers and for staff when they need to, when there's dogs in here. Uh, we do have a gate in the corner, but uh, ideally we want to have access from within the shelter. But don't worry, under that water tower, you might remember, there was a couple of useful toilets. Well, the drilling you can hear is just there, and that is replacing those toilets. And just here, as a matter of interest, this is one of now, is it four in total going to be with the new ones? Uh, deep water wells, and I say deep, these go down 170 metres. Water, as you probably might have noticed with the lake height, is such a valuable commodity here but this we're guaranteed will give us uninterrupted supply of water um, from these four deep water wells so that's what these are here you can see again a bit of uh, deruns um, were they done before I'm just going to mention we do still get a few volunteers this young lady is from Phuket or Bangkok Phuket, yeah. Phuket. okay welcome and so we've got some a few local nothing like we used to have but we do get one or two volunteers coming uh, which is great and this is her first time okay Okay, now here you'll see huge changes, where I'm stood now we used to have containers, water cabins and this was a temporary cat shelter for the those who came more recently and prior to that the volunteer centre and that's what was here. Again there's now two large runs known as K1 and K2. Um, the dogs in these at the moment are actually temporary. Uh, they come from the H runs and also the senior dog run one because as you'll see later that is also being completely revamped. But this again provides a lot more space uh, for another 50 dogs in this area when they return to their original areas. So maybe we just walk down here to have a closer look. This is D run, so for those who are familiar, this is D3 and D4 behind it. So these are the dogs from Seniors 1, and they're in here temporarily uh, until we get their revamped home back. <laughs> And these are currently the dogs that are excited to see us from the eight shows. I won't try and talk over a friend here. Now, 
this was complete obviously before Covid but for those of you who aren't familiar with it this is the volunteer area and the visitors centre above our offices and also our vets common room and there's also a dormitory there for vets who are coming in for training from well at the moment only within Thailand but also in the future from Myanmar that was planned for last year and um, Vietnam but because of Covid they've been unable to come and here those of you who remember will probably remember where, this is the side of K run here and this is where the C runs were and the C runs were never uh, I was so pleased when they went because they were not an ideal place they were built right at the beginning when we first opened the shelter as basically kennels for dogs um, who needed treatment but not serious enough that they had to be in the then small hospital. So that's what it was used for in a recovery area. They've now gone. New ones have been built for dogs that still require treatment but don't need to be in hospital and we'll see those later. The whole sterilization unit has been changed, this is a store here but this section has all been added on uh, it's basically the kennels for dogs have, wait, have been sterilised but need to stay maybe they're in season or pregnant or there's a slight complication and we need to keep them here so this is where these, they formerly would go into one of uh, two or three of the sea, sea runs, but these are much nicer, so they're here. Of less interest, but still new, this is for parking for staff. Obviously the sign had to be changed, this is a favourite place for people to have the photographs taken, so it's now Obviously this building comes out further, you might remember there's a porter cabin here which belonged to the behaviour team. They now have their own uh, building in the new land. Um, so this is where we are here. We can see the front of the volunteer area nicely, the hospital obviously is the same. And uh, this is staff accommodation which has been revamped a bit. So as we walk down, we will be taking you here as well, because this is new. This is the new cat shelter built on the site, or adapted from the original cat hospital. And Louise will show you that in a lot more detail. These runs here have also been modified. Uh, the small dog runs. Uh, the number of small dogs has drastically increased because of COVID. So many pets adopted. Uh, sorry, abandoned, and we come now to this location, and this, you will remember, hopefully, this was the site of the original hospital, and also offices, this is what we had when we first came, it was a converted cattle shed, we had this, we had some, a block here that was staff accommodation, we had the shed which was the volunteer area, and we had the A and B runs, and that was it originally. Now, in some ways, yeah, I think people were sad almost to see the old hospital go because it was a part of soy dog, but on the other hand, it was no longer suitable for its purpose. It was being used as an isolation unit. The conditions in there were not good. It wasn't good for the staff. The building, to be honest, was getting pretty dilapidated, remembering it was a converted cattle shed. And we'll go in here now. It sounds fairly quiet, so the builders are working. And Louise, do you want to take over and explain what's happening here? Do you want the pool? Or I'll do it, whatever. Yep. Or maybe do about the pool. Sourdy cup. <laughs> okay, so we're in a building site now. Do you want to explain yeah. maybe this one? So, for all of you who have visited us before, this area was known as the H1 run and SSM1 right at the end. So with the, having the old K 
clinic stroke isolation hospital um, demolished, we've been able to um, come in here and, and absolutely re 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 uh, we've been able to come in and revamp it. So basically, what we've done now is with the SSM1 is build them a proper indoor area uh, for them to all stay together overnight, which can keep nice and dry and clean. And also then here, which is more importantly, we are building um, some special needs runs. These are for dogs that are paralyzed or have neurological issues who are who are beautiful loving dogs um, young full of life but can't be housed with other dogs and it's important they also get the love and the enrichment and the attention they need so we are building them their own little runs so they can be inside safe at night and then have some grass and and, and garden to uh, enjoy and have visitors and volunteers spend time with them and hopefully then fall in love and get them adopted. Can I explain about yes. what's happening here? Yeah. Okay. But this area here, sort of up to the old walkway, and from that point really where you that wood is and coming down we're going to have something quite new and exciting um soy dogs vice president john higgs has always been uh wanting to see a pool here for dogs and he's financing this it's going to start work on it well as soon as this is finished it shouldn't be too long and it's actually going to be a swimming pool for dogs and It'll have uh, shade over it, it'll have a sloping beach and it'll enable dogs, give them again another channel. A lot of our dogs love water, it gives them another outlet to run off excess energy or swim off excess energy probably I should say. And also it provides also further work for further a facility for the physio team. We do have the um, hydrotherapy unit. But this will enable also to be able to bring dogs on a lead and let them swim along the distance naturally. So there's a lot of potential for it. We should probably mention as well, behind these runs, this is also totally new, where again the H runs, one of the H runs, H2 was it Louise? Yeah, I get mixed up the H2, which was and also where the young dogs used to be kept, but they've now uh, grown in numbers. And there again is set up as kennels, that's for the shelter. Um, the shelter vets for dogs that are from the runs that need treatment and so they're being put in there. We can take you briefly around there, it's too much interest, but have a quick look. Dr Sue, our shelter manager, her office is up there which also serves as the kitten room. Uh, Dr Sue keeps all the small kittens up there, the ones that aren't being fostered because they're too young to be, you know, um, they need home bottle feeding, but these are young kittens. Happily, they all seem to get adopted, but that's where they stay. Just before we go there, and Louise will explain what's happening there, and indeed, some of the dogs that you saw in um, uh, the UK run, temporarily, the H dogs there, of course, are moving into there and some of the ones in D5 are also from what are the new C runs at the back so Louise will explain all that to you. Here is uh, as you know a small sort of garden area this is going to be extended and again thanks John Higgs for support with this but we're going to put a nice garden in here which will go along to the pool area behind the pool area where people particularly with the older dogs can come and sit or anybody can come and contemplate um, There'll be uh, a water feature in there, there'll be benches, there'll be people can sit and relax. And so that will also be happening, but that'll be after the pool's finished, so when the land is available. Okay. So this is the site of the old H2 run, or the teenage run, as it was used to be affectionately known. This has been repurposed into treatment kennels. So these are for resident dogs who need some daily care. They don't need to be in 
the hospital, so they need our shelter vets to actually administer and keep an eye on them for, for a time before they can then go back out into the run. Behind there is what we call the sea kennels. Now, in there, these are dogs that have come in to the hospital needing life-saving treatment. They're very scared, they've lived on the streets, and we just need, when they've that treatment and care is finished, to spend a little time, our behaviour team, getting them used to shelter life, spending time getting them used to on a lead, trusting humans again, because we do also get a lot of cruelty cases. Um, and then from there, we get to know them, we get to, to learn their personalities, and then they move out into the rooms and hopefully be adopted. house um, served a few purposes since then. And the purpose it serves today is uh, a, a really a, a clinic for our shelter vets. So this is where the resident dogs who maybe need some sort of care, whether that be dressings, whether that be some IV fluids, maybe that's just a nail trim, they can come in here into our shelter vets and here they are as we speak giving uh, our dogs some treatment and they get really good care and upstairs this is where our sanctuary director has her office come kit room as John said where she will look after the very young kittens that have come in that are going through their vaccination schedule. So we don't want to put them out into the main category just in case they, they, they pick up uh, the numerous diseases. So once they're fully vaccinated, they will be sterilised and our adoption team have no problems at all adopting out young kittens here within Thailand. Obviously the hospital is to my right, um, perhaps Ray can put up a link because we have a video of a tour of the hospital, so you, anybody interested to see who hasn't seen that, who wants to see the inside of the hospital and the remarkable, the amazing facilities that it has now, um, Ray will put a link in the video for you to see. Okay, so we're going to now move to the cat shelter, which you'll talk everybody through. this served us both. Um, I think John as you predicted that once um, the, the stray population of dogs was controlled within Phuket that you would see an explosion of cats um, and that's certainly what, what, what we have seen a lot more cats needing, needing treatment and certainly the need to have and build a cat hospital. So that allowed us then to repurpose and re um, renovate uh, the old clinic and uh, we'll take you in there now and uh, show you.
here is the uh, vet um, room. This is the treatment room, so this is where any of the cats, resident cats who need some daily, daily care, whether that be um, some eye drops or just checking on, on their health, this is uh, where that's done and as you can see, they're currently checking out the cat. Oh, total, there are three cat suites. Then there is a FELV suite. Uh, these cats have to be kept separate because they can infect other cats. FELV um, for cats is, is feline leukemia. Um, a lot of these cats, life will be... Um, will be shorter than, than, than most, but while they're here, they get all the treatment, they get the supplements, they get the love and the care. Um, and a lot do live a few years um, with a healthy, happy life. And we will adopt out some locally to, to homes where they can, can be an indoor cat and um, be looked after. And as you can see, here's one here. Maybe can say hello. Probably worth pointing out for volunteers when they come who like to come in here that you can go in any of the suites, but we ask you only to go in the FIV and FELV when you've finished in these suites, yeah, because of uh, the chances of cross contamination are small, but there is a risk there. So. And as you can see, we have made it as homely and as, as enriching for the cats as possible. As you can see, they love to get cats, love to get up high in, in sleep in places, they love little nooks and crannies, they love beds, they love to scratch. Um, so we've tried to make it like an indoor, outdoor sort of area. Outside garden and then the indoor door home. And as you can see as we move down into cat suite three, uh, we've got the scratching posts and all the little beds and outside we've got numerous toys. And we do actually have lots of, of, of companies within within Thailand who are great, well, we're very grateful for, for donating toys. But that was one of the things we obviously miss with volunteers because volunteers would often bring cat toys and cat beds over with them uh, when they came. And, as you know, cats love a two play. And this cat suite is our FIV suite. This is, again, this is uh, highly contagious. So most of these cats here can spread, can, can spread the FIV virus through scratching um, and, and being in contact with other cats. So when a cat comes in, receives treatment um, and is to stay, they will come into this suite. And as you can see, we're giving all the little beds, the little scratching posts and the daily care clean that they need. We do get some of these adopted, don't we? But they have, to, be, they have to remain as house cats. Yes, we do. can't come into contact with cats that aren't infected. Yeah. Um, usually we, we do have adopters who have cats that are already FIV and of course we can adopt cats out to them um, because then they, they can't pass it on. But yeah, the same with our FELV and our FIV cats. Um, when we do adopt them, they do have to remain uh, inside. And here we are at uh, our new cat hospital. The cat hospital was opened in the latter quarter of 2019. Um, and as I said, it was very much needed. Uh, during 2020, we actually admitted almost 2,500 cats 
through those doors for much needed life-saving treatment. There is a tour of the hospital um, and Ray again will put a link into the video if you would like to have a look inside and uh, see what goes on there. Um, the, 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 the almost 2,500 cats for treatment, just to, to give it some scale, was 37% more that we could treat compared to 2019. Um, and the hospital is always up to full capacity. Um, so yeah. Next, just across the way, I'll take you into our laundry area. Here we are in our laundry area and um, I just recently found out some, some figures and some with regards to the amount of laundry do and it really was quite staggering. As you can see here we, all, we have two um, industrial size washing machines already plumbed in and they are working seven days a week. We do 16 loads a day, each load is 27 kilos. So that is a staggering three tonnes of laundry a week. These are from, as you can see, from towels from the hospital. They're towels when we bath the dogs. Every dog gets a bath at least once a week, some more if they have skin infections and need that daily care. And each one has a fresh towel. In the hospital, in the cat hospital, we lay towels to, so, that, so the dogs can, can lay on them, but of course, dogs in treatment have accidents and maybe they go through three or four towels a day certainly in the mum and puppy unit they can go through as many as eight or nine towels a day and blankets and they all end up here so much so we've had to recently purchase another industrial washing machine that will allow us to add on to that three tons another one and a half tons of laundry a week to keep on top of things that's a lot of laundry, that's a lot of drying, that's a lot of folding and a lot of detergent. I found that quite amazing. Of course, the reason we need another one is because more dogs, more cats, cats. means more washing. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. The bigger you get, the more animals you look after, the more washing. Thank you. Okay. So, this is our amazing laundry tea. Always busy. <laughs> so as we walk down here, to briefly mention, I mean these were already here, but upstairs are um, we got all those porter cabins that had to be removed and uh, of people working all over the shelter. We now have everybody upstairs so that improves efficiency and communication and also of course with all the porter cabins gone saves money there but also has provided room for further building. Here in front of us is really a vital building and these is, this is the isolation unit and this has replaced the old what that was happening in the old hospital and the conditions are just so different this one cdv that's canine distemper virus and we've had a big outbreak this year it's affected many dogs in phuket we've had over 40 from the government dog pound and they've all been brought here to this unit and at the moment louise we have how many dogs in there over 40 is it we have over 60 dogs in our canine distemper virus ward um, and we have over 27 in our canine parvo virus. And you were telling me some statistics earlier about the death rate mm. and how that has been transformed since these new units have come in and it really is I think down to the conditions um, it's and also for the staff working area as well it's made it so much more pleasant for both animals and staff and that has transformed the, num the survival rate, true? Yeah, just to, just to give you some quick figures, usually the survival rate of a, a, an adult, uh, the survival rate of a dog um, with distemper is 50-50. Is with a puppy, because it's very 
you know, immature and its immune system very weak, that's as low as 10%. So we've had, since the opening of our new isolation hospital, we have seen over 90% of the animals survive. And that is just, it's just phenomenal. And again, as John said, that's down to the conditions, the care, the treatment that these animals get, that they're surviving. So most shelters, once they get an outbreak of parvo or distemper, will put um, the animal to sleep. Uh, reason being is it's highly contagious. Our conditions in here, as you say, we, we can't go in there. There's, there's a, the vet and the vet nurses and the, and the carers who are in there, they go in, they stay in there, they look after those animals. And every time they come out, they have to have a shower, wash their hair, change their clothes before they can come out, whether that be to lunch, whether that to be going home at night. It is so highly important because the con these diseases are very uh, contagious and can spread very easily. So we, we take the care and we contain it and we, we're saving these animals that really we wouldn't stand have, a chance. Do they even have their own laundry facilities? They do. Yeah. I'll take you around there as well at the moment. Behind here, we have our distemper and parvo laundry. At the moment, as John said, we are um, seeing an outbreak of distemper, so washing again is, 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 is constant. Because a lot with these diseases comes diarrhoea, vomiting, and sickness. Um, so again, can't take you in there because highly contagious. But yes, it's it's a full time job for, for for our laundry guys. The other side of that door, constantly laundering and drying towels and sheets. We're behind. Actually, we'll see these in a minute. Some more than new runs. Um, but over here, you'll see we have Q1, Q2. Those are quarantine areas. You correct me if I'm mistaken, but predominantly these are dogs that have been in the parvo or, sorry, the distemper unit, pardon, the distemper unit. And although they're cured and they're free of the disease, they can still shed to other dogs for a period of time. So they're kept in these quarantine areas away from other dogs until that period is over and we know they're totally negative. I uh, understand that um, we, once the infection is cleared, as I said, we will test and they move here and it can, as John said, it usually the average is a month that they can still shed the disease. It can be up to three months so we keep an eye on them, regularly test them and then when they're free of the virus completely then uh, we move them out and hopefully find them loving new homes. And here we are, outside our Humane Education Centre. That was opened in November 2020. The first one of its kind in Southeast Asia, and I know that makes me proud, and I know it certainly makes John proud, because we're firm believers in CMVR spaying and neutering uh, will, along with humane education, is what will really and truly make an impact on the stray dog population within Thailand. Again, there is a separate video on this, but we'll have a quick look in in a couple of minutes. Um, or well, we would if we got social security. There we go. very quiet at the moment. Unfortunately, due to COVID outbreak in November, um, we sort of went into a, a bit of a lockdown again, and the schools are very much, unfortunately, we can go in and do lessons, but a bit nervous of letting them come out. Um, so we're hoping that come the new term, which happens in April, that we'll be able to have this unit brimming with the children. As you can see, everything is uh, devised for child hide. 
These messages up the wall are all in Thai and they give children the chance to, to, to look and see that animals need love, they need a vet when they're poorly, they like things to play with and enrichment, they need your time and they need to be groomed, cared and looked after. Them drinks, snacks, somewhere to put all their bags. Yep. Before we head on in to the room itself. So as you can see, we have created a chalkboard for the children to be able to draw and chalk. We've also got tables for them to sit at to be able to uh, learn their lessons and mats on the floor where they can just sit, a reading area, corner which is important with bean bags and then obviously we have the, we have the telly where they can sit, watch educational films and of course just then from here move out into the sanctuary and actually connect with the animals that they're, they're learning about. A lot of um, the education material is about the five freedoms, um, freedoms from thirst, hunger, malnutrition, free from pain and disease, uh, the freedom to be able to act under their natural behaviour. Um, and they can actually hear this, but then actually go out and physically meet the animals and, and connect with them, which is really important and why this centre is, 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 is vital to, to make that connection between what they're being taught and the actual animals um, we're talking about. We do plan to, this is as I say very new, is have lots of artwork from the children that they produce all over the walls and up the stairs to, to really give a feel of learning and, and, and f create an atmosphere of, of, of fun in here. John, anything to add? I think you've covered everything. It is a, it's a wonderful facility. And um, obviously, yeah, we're very proud of it. Mm -hmm. And we hope to see literally thousands of children coming through this when COVID is finished. And again, there is no more restrictions, hopefully later this year. Okay. If you're wondering exactly where we are now, next to the education centre and the quarantine areas, this is the driveway that's always actually come in. We own the driveway to give us access to the shelter, the gates of which are there. So that was the entrance to the original shelter. So this area here, which incorporates, in fact, all the buildings you've seen thus far, is what I would describe as phase two. This was the second piece of land we bought and this was able to house, again, everything you've seen so far. Plus, if we go down here, it might sound a little uninteresting, but I think it's important to see. <laughs> this is our main store area. Um, we'll just pop in here. I'm a frequent visitor because when I walk dogs, which I try and do two or three times a week, uh, I like to give them treats, so I come in and buy treats. Um, but as you can see, these are a... Good man, good nap on, or look after the stores. You can see it's been well constructed partly because we have problems throughout Thailand, not only here with rats and mice. So this, build, this store area is made uh, inside, internally, it's, it's literally should be rat and mouse proof. And it's up to now, we've not seen any instances, have we? Of, we haven't. No. So we have all the food in this area, all the cleaning materials that are needed. 
and also things like stationery, all needed, other things. The hospital actually, that's another new addition which I want to show you, but in the hospital we now have a, a new, uh, much bigger store in the hospital which takes all the medical, uh, the actual hospital equipment, the medical and treatment, um, drugs and so on. So this is the, the stores, so much more I can say about that. And as we go down here, you saw where D5 had taken the place of the old maintenance stores. Well, uh, this is the new maintenance area uh, where our maintenance team work. They're constantly busy maintaining and repairing and also building. They do quite a lot of the building of new, uh, new facilities. And this is where they are, uh, it's where they live now, put it that way. But all these people obviously are vital to uh, the work we do. Okay, so we're now going to go into what will really be what we call phase three. Yeah, the other new land where you'll see a lot of new shelters. Now an area which <coughs> more recent uh, volunteers will be familiar with is this off-lead area because this is still in what I call phase two and this is where volunteers bring dogs when they're walking and uh, let them have some off-lead time. Photo shoot going on for a potentially an adoptable dog. <laughs> the adopter. Oh, so where's where's he going? UK. Going to the UK. So this is a dog that's already been adopted. We also keep our adopters up to date with how they're doing and uh, as you can see Lynn is one of our adoption coordinators and Jan is one of our uh, photographers and works in the creative uh, department so they would send videos and photos to adopters who were waiting for their new, uh, new fur baby to arrive. You're a blind dog. Yeah. You know, there are some wonderful people out there who want to give a home to a blind dog, to a blind dog. Absolutely. And disabled dogs, many disabled dogs are, are adopted, it's, uh, and it's wonderful to see. I think we can vouch for that, for having how many dogs between us in our life. We've got six, <laughs> yeah. a few dogs, and you've got... So this area is a nice area where volunteers bring the dogs up and uh, okay, can let them off the leads. Now obviously when we've got, as we often have at this time, we normally have at this time of year, we'd have 40, 50 volunteers, two off lead areas is not enough. And as we go into phase three, you'll see where we used to have another two off lead areas which have now gone. And you'll understand why they've gone when we get round there. <laughs> So, at this point, we now enter what is phase three land. So this land was bought, uh, the last piece to be bought prior to the new land you've just seen.
We'll stop just here for a minute. This is now the behaviour team headquarters. They use this room for getting dogs used to being indoors and it's furnished so they know how to uh, uh, behave indoors, training them for when they're adopted. They have their own off-lead area at the back there and these kennels here are where some of their dogs are housed that uh, are still undergoing behaviour training. Along here we have what are the Efrons and behind are the uh, so Efrons actually form two blocks. It's, I always get confused with this. We have F behind and then one, two, three is it? And the seniors one and then F four, five, six and also the G run kennels which are separate kennels again. For behaviour cases we exercised every day and worked with ex every day but um, cannot be mixed regularly with other dogs. Unfortunately many are cruelty cases or abandoned pets or where they just haven't learnt to be social with other dogs um, but as John said they are walked twice a day they're also given enrichment we we've got Kongs for all of them and we'll freeze them with chicken stock or peanut butter uh, they'll have toys and you know it, 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 people can go in they're very friendly dogs um, it's the fact that they just don't mix well with other dogs so um, and we have to keep them separate but we make sure which is extremely important that all dogs have a quality of life and on my left here this is where there were off lead areas but now these are the J runs which nobody um, even if you were volunteering last March will have seen or still an off lead area um, and again, four main runs plus an overflow at the side where dogs that have got a bit few issues that we have to keep keeping separate for the time being. Most of the, the dogs, as John said, in there, they come from the puppy run. All, and they've, they've been brought into soy at a very young age. They've either gone into the mum and pups, they haven't got their mum anymore, or they've um, survived parvo or distemper. But unfortunately, at that critical age where socialisation is so important, they didn't get that. They didn't have siblings or they didn't have a mum to show them the way. So we want to work with them, give them the socialisation skills, not only with other dogs, but also with humans. So then they can go on to be moved into other runs and be adopted to either our amazing uh, partner rescues or to, to private adopters who um, can open up their homes for, for such a dog. And just here, this again is another deep water well being drilled. Uh, as I say, I can't stress enough the, the issue with water. Uh, this year generally in Phuket has been good because of no tourists here to use it. So the reservoirs are still full, but we're not connected to the water system. So we have to provide our own water. Most of it is circulated, treated through our uh, special treatment plant and is returned to the lake you saw and that water is then reused for cleaning, hosing down and this sort of thing. Uh, it's all filtered and basically tested so we know it's good to use. The back of the puppy run onto what is again, that was still on the original land, this is new land. These have actually been here over a year now but uh, these are the so it's F4 to 7, that's four runs, and then you've got these G kennels, which are seven of those, I think, or eight of those, which are, uh, again, for individual dogs that cannot mix with other dogs. Too dangerous.
Most people are familiar with the Seniors 1 and Seniors 2 that were there next to the Puppy Run. But this is now Seniors 1 and F1 to 3. Yeah, Seniors 3 and F1 to 3. So here, this is special, Seniors and Special Needs 3. So these are really all the dogs in Seniors and Special Needs 3 that they're very old, they're hospice, they've come out to, to share happy sunny days because they're still eating, love a cuddle, love a little walk and we have a, a, a lady who works in here called Deanna. A lot of you who have volunteered and uh, here in the past will know Deanna because she used to be the manager of the visitor and volunteer. But she now looks after, cares, treats, um, our oldies uh, and make sure they get the love that they need while they're with us. As well as often massaging. Yeah, and massaging and, and, and all sorts. Um, I just love to spend time with the oldies and, and get them. Who again is another old one. These are Okay, I'm coming in. Yeah, we've got one of you out, but that's why we have security gates. A bit difficult. Well, stay there till we go out. <laughs> Hello, darlings. Most of the dogs in here are, uh, are over the age of 10. Um, we have 700 at the moment, 711 dogs, resident dogs in the, in the sanctuary. To stay. That doesn't include in the hospital. And out of them, 141 are over the age of 10. So that's 20% of our resident dog population is is senior. Um, they're here because they all need regular care as you can see and they have oldie problems. They need eye care, they have kidney problems, they have liver problems, they have skin and fungal problems and they're living longer. But the reality is they're they happy. Get care and they're happy. I always like to think of these, imagine these dogs they was, really wouldn't survive on the streets and you imagine an old dog, it, gets, it can no longer really fight for its food or survive. And I look, this is almost like a retirement home for them. <laughs> hey, where well, you can live out your days in, in peace and uh, not under threat. But you were saying, Louise, how much, what percentage of dogs here are over 10? Yeah. And although we just had news today of a one over 10 being adopted, yes. hopefully, uh, obviously adoptions of older dogs is not that, uh, not that common. It's probably worth pointing out that every kennel now, all the A runs, all the B runs, have had additional uh, separate kennels put in and that is basically where we've got some dogs that don't always get on with another dog and for safety reasons at night we'll put those dogs away and even during the day sometimes we'll alternate 
Uh, some will come in and some will go out. And others like this one, they're not uh, just in this next run here. I think there was one, he come out now? Yep, he's in there because he wants to be in there. There's no reason he has to stay, but they do like to come in, they're a bit quieter. minutes away from it all and this is Aqua Girl. Aqua Girl is over 10 and she's also adopted and gone into a home. She's uh, too cool for it, aren't you? Hey? Yeah. She's getting on for it and she's got she's got a bad heart but she's happy, she's friendly, she loves love, so treatment and whilst they love and they 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 get along with other dogs we are working with them and hence in the behavior garden and in the behavior cabin to get them more used to interacting with with humans to make sure that they're carers and potentially they can move out into the other rooms for volunteers and, in, and enjoy a walk but it's interesting we have CCTV, CCTV cameras in all our runs and quite often, after five when the sanctuary is shut, I sit in my office and I watch the CCTV and it's beautiful to see these dogs play and interact with each other. Um, so, yeah, not all dogs like humans, but certainly some like to uh, mix and play with their own kind. So we're back now on familiar ground between Small Dogs 1 and the Puppy Run, many of whom are now getting quite large puppies because again we had a distemper case in there so they had to be quarantined. Um, and we're back where here where the work is now going on for the new H Run. So I hope you've enjoyed that and it's given you an insight and particularly for I know many of you who would would have been here this year and we're really looking forward to, or last year and we're really looking forward to coming and volunteering again we don't know when that's going to happen of course I'm, they keep talking about re reducing the restrictions here and maybe when the vaccines have all been done letting people uh, come in freely even but I don't see that happening be much before the end of this year so I hope in the meantime that gives you an idea of what's happening and what's continuing to happen 
and none of it could happen without your support. So a huge thanks to everybody, uh, all our supporters who make this possible. And of course, this is just one part of our work. The sterilisation teams are doing so much across Thailand now and sterilising more animals than any organisation anywhere. So thank you again from the bottom of our hearts and um, so I hope you enjoy watching. And we hope to see you and welcome you and embrace you very soon.